Welcome to the Age of Vision radio show with your host, Lonnie Clark. Our dedication to living life joyfully allows us to confront the reality of unmitigated deception and political denial of the harm caused by nuclear and chemical contamination. We demand an end to corporate control of science and suppression of facts for political and financial gain. We are not assets on a balance sheet. We must honestly work together to remediate damage to benefit our planet and humanity. Remember, happiness is resistance and love is greater than fear. Join the Age of Fission radio show on Spreaker.com. Search for Lonnie Clark for all our podcasted shows. Podcasts are also on YouTube at Nuts for Art. N-U-T-Z-F-O-R-A-R-T. Thank you for being part of the solution. Good afternoon. This is Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission Radio Show. I want to thank all of our listeners for joining us. I am really delighted to have with me uh, Nancy Newell, who's a Northwest activist and has worked extensively in closing down our efforts to close down the Columbia Generating Station and effectively worked to close down Pilgrim. So thank you, Nancy, for joining us here in the Age of Fission. Yeah. And it wasn't Pilgrim. It was uh, Trojan. It was Governor Trojan. Barbara Roberts here in the Northwest. And uh, after Fukushima, of course, everybody became keenly aware that we're not operating technologies that help the future of our children, our grandchildren. I mean, the cycle that it creates is something we really want to stop and close this plant is a good beginning. Yeah, well, closing the Columbia Generating Station. That's the beginning that you want, right? It is a beginning that we want. I mean, the thing is, we're trying to, Louisa Hamachek and I are attempting, you know, we have the last nuke radio show. It's on we air it on KEPW on Monday nights at 4.30 or 7.30. The whole focus is about closing the Columbia Generating Station. One of the things we're researching is why do you think this, maybe you have insight to this, why is that plant open? Because it's illegal, it's over, it's over budget, it doesn't conform with law, it doesn't provide us with a lot of electricity, so why do we have to have it? Well, and the other thing is it produces waste, we have nowhere to put it. And then it has to be washed over for thousands of years. Now, we can't even watch over simpler problems. What makes us think that this plant is special and we absolutely need it, which we don't even need it. We don't need the electricity. We don't need it. But do you know why they're keeping it open? The only thing that I possibly can think of, which is very remote, is more waste goes into nuclear weapons, which we don't need more of. We're trying to reduce them. We're creating such world tension with the number of nuclear weapons we do have and the practices of those deteriorating at their missile sites and the money expenditures, why do we want to add another after spending $250 million recently to keep this thing going when the pipes inside you can't even get into, according to Arnie Gunderson's group and the way these things are designed, so they're the failed Westinghouse lousy pipe design and you can't even reach them. You have to take the whole plant down to get it thoroughly repaired. So they fooled everybody just recently, spending $250 million That Don't worry, folks. Great electricity. It's completely repaired. Don't worry about it. And it has destroyed our Chinook salmon, where it flushes radioactive water at the salmon's favorite site to migrate back to because it has wonderfully cold, pure water in the Columbia River. And that's where they flush the highly radioactive water. And they keep saying, everybody, most environmental groups say it's the dams. Well, yeah, that's some of it. But the big part of it is the Chinook salmon that are older than the dinosaurs as a species. So what about up in the Columbia Gorge? They, every year they have that big uh, boating festival out there on the Columbia, right? Mm-hmm. Do you think that that's safe for people to sl- swim in the Columbia River up there? Not at all safe. Not at all safe, and it's a huge event. It is a huge event. And I think the reason that Hood River has lost so much uh, business and it moved to another location at some of its festivals because it's on the Columbia, and people have gained more knowledge 
how, how radio, radiated, especially after Fukushima, they're educating themselves, uh, the river is. So it's affecting our economies, and not only there, but the cost of electricity. The people voted, we don't want it. If it can't meet the market test, why are we using it? And now we've proven we don't need it because we have free electricity from California sitting at our southern border on the Bonneville Power, largest in the world transmission line, and our Enron guy who runs the BPA now that the Democrats appointed, knowing that he was out of Enron, will not allow it to come up to our grid. And we could benefit from that. We would save a ton of money and not have the waste. So what's the problem? You think that we would save money if we closed the Columbia Generating Station? Absolutely. Every household would save money? Every household would save money. How much do you think our bills are increased by it? Uh, at least, at least, I would say at this point, at least, I would say 40%. And I, I don't want to be quoted on that because I haven't seen the latest figures, but it's quite a bit. Really? Yeah. That's a lot. And then you don't include all the side effects of health care. Right. Everybody here, I mean, the breast cancer is high rate. I think we're the highest in the country with women's breast cancer. Men's uh, cancer in their private parts is way through the roof in the Northwest. Health care costs for people, they, they're homeless. We have record numbers of homeless in Portland. Why do we keep going with this? With our politicians having full knowledge of it, uh, Senator Merkley, the U.S. Senator, he is against nuclear weapon use, and so is Earl Blumenauer, our congressperson, and DeFazio has always historically talked about this and the ridiculous expenses of some of Bonneville Power's operations. And nobody's doing anything about it. Why? Why? They're required to do it by a vote of the public. Why? That was 13 years ago, a referendum. Passed easily throughout the state. So what's what's holding us back? Well, on top of that, in 2014, they, the Earth Island Journal highlighted the earthquake, the new earthquake faults that are surrounding the Columbia Generating Station. And it's actually put the state of Oregon on a permanent state of emergency for earthquakes. Yeah. And they aren't Same even, thing Washington, too. Yeah. And if we look at Trump's plan, President Trump, of uh, evacuating us, I mean, it's ludicrous. And he's also proposed taking the waste and transporting it with unmarked trucks down our highways uh, en route to North Carolina to dump it into the ocean. That's not proposed. They were actually going to do that. They passed that yeah. resolution. They right. basically well, have re, they've reclassified that 100,000 gallons it's 100 million gallons of waste up at Hanford. Right. They've reclassified it as low level, so now they can transport it in unmarked cars, unprotected, and bury it in shallow graves in Utah and in Texas. So they have to transport it from Hanford to Utah or Texas. Right, but uh, some, there are some local attorneys that are very experienced in the courts to fight that. That's right. So that is starting to progress. Right, they're going to try to fight it. we just got to keep on top of our spokespeople that are in Congress that are elected that keep talking about this, and they're not. And the even the union people that serve the plant with the you know the electrical workers, the steam fitters, their children and their grandchildren are getting cancer, and they don't want it anymore. They don't want the jobs. It's not worth it to them. And they know that the California has expanded jobs because it's a healthier com economy, and the skills they can easily transition into. So what is the problem? Well, my question is, do you think that they actually know that it's dangerous? I think a lot of people working in that nuclear power plant think it's perfectly safe for them. Not anymore. I've talked to the head of the union of all the AFL-CIO member unions, and uh, he said that most of them wanted that closed 10 years ago. Wow. And the only reason they kept it open was for the workers' unions at, at Hanford. And... He uh, has now, all the workers have changed their opinion for the most part. Most of them are not supporting it at all. They, uh, they know how they suffer, and they know the opportunities. Do you think it matters if we call our elected officials? Like, and who should we call? It always matters. It always matters. If you remain silent, what does that create? An atmosphere of people like uh, Portland is growing and growing and growing, and we're trapped in a nuclear nightmare. We have to do it. There's no reason not to do it. 
and they have to hear from us and we have to keep calling because they are by a people's referendum required to act on closing it and they're not who refuses to act on closing it well i just talked to senator merkley at one of his fundraisers and i talked to him about the issue and he almost he almost chased me off the line <laughs> he didn't he didn't give a very good answer at all and he's supposed to be one of our leaders in making things safer and uh, saner and healthier in the economy and he didn't want to talk about it wow yeah so uh, yeah I know his office says that they support closing the Columbia generating station when I've talked to his office and yet Jeff Merkley actually endorsed the small nuclear reactors along with Pete DeFazio and Ron Wyden. Yeah. So they take, they kind of talk out of two sides of their mouths. And that is, in fact, why we have contamination everywhere. Because they say, oh, yeah, we're against it, but let's don't talk about the dumping. You know, let's don't talk about how contaminated the Columbia River is, because then people would get freaked out. Yeah, well, the good news is that in spite of his, the, their support, we uh, found out about it and how they wrote it up, and they haven't even been built. The design came out of Oregon State University, and a French bankrupt nuclear power company came in to help them design it, but it's never been built, never been manufactured. They're, they're refrigerator size, 13 connected underground, create more waste than the large plants. Now you tell me, how common sense is it to dig into the ground to stop a nuclear accident that is leaking radiation into our drinking water and we don't know we even we don't know about it we don't hear about it and why would we even propose something on paper we know it, it doesn't work it produces waste it's all a negative so I can't understand it I personally we, I think it's tied into the war machine I think they want something that plant must develop something that works for the war machine uh, I think it's more to uh, this image of us being somehow part of the whatever progressive ideas that we will never be. You know, people think with global warming that, oh, if we don't have nuclear power, we won't survive. That's all baloney. Actually, the global warming adds to the benefit of reducing global warming by using the technologies that ends the, the kinds of contaminants that create further global warming. Like, how about taking care of nuclear waste, folks, for thousands of years? How much global warming is added to that? Transport? Storage? What? The deterioration of storage? I mean, come on. Who are they kidding? Do they think we're that dumb? Well, even like that, the warming of the oceans. I actually said this to Dr. Chris Busby. I interviewed him about three years ago. We were on air, actually. Yeah. And I said to him, you know, because when I first, when Fukushima first happened, you know, he was like, oh, well, don't worry. There's the ocean's way too big to be affected. But this was like four or five years on. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, I said, well, you know, it's obvious we have, it pours in 100 million gallons of radioactive waste into the Pacific Ocean every day, and that's what they're telling us. Mm -hmm. So I said, you can't tell me that that is not, for me, this is the way I've thought about it logically, is that that, even if the bigger animals, the bigger species are able to survive, the microorganisms inside the ocean are being affected by the radioactivity. And that, it's the food chain, the smaller ones, the small, like the krill. There's no krill. This is why we have, what did Heidi tell us, over 50 dead whales off of the Oregon coast this year in 2019 alone already? 50 dead whales? I mean, we are having a catastrophe in the oceans. But again, I mentioned this to you last night when we were talking about the radio show. Like, for me, it's kind of annoying that right now we have fires in the Amazon and all around the planet. Mm -hmm. I intuitively know, because there's been no scientific evidence, that these fires are exponentially larger because a, they are burning up radioactive contaminated waste that's been sitting there for the last 80 years. They bombed the day of 2,000 bombs yeah. in a 10-year period, like sure. for real. Like that whole, during the bomb testing period... That nuclear waste went somewhere. It settled somewhere on some, just like in Fukushima, they cannot decontaminate the forest around Fukushima. It's an exclusion zone mm -hmm. because it cannot be decontaminated. So when that forest catches on fire, it's going to be just like in Santa Susana, highly radioactive, just like yeah. 
The fire last summer at the Santa Susana Field Lab started at the Santa Susana Field Lab. But when they, the firemen came in and put water on it, the fires exploded. The firemen described that. Like as soon as we put water on it, that's because it was made from a sodium reactor and sodium contaminated waste actually explodes when it's contracted with water, in contact with water. Yeah. And nobody told the firemen. Nobody told them. Yeah. It took them weeks for the fire department to, to say, oh, well, the fire started here, building aid at the Santa Susana Field Lab. So that means that something happened there that they were not taking care of yep. that started the fire. It's, it's what I call nuclear numbing. Mm -hmm. They just want us all to go, oh, yeah, hmm, what time is it for dinner? Let's don't talk about our child having cancer yeah. or our son getting diabetes when he's a teenager or the autoimmune diseases that every child is afflicted with or the autism that's increasing. I mean, I, I do this radio show and I talk to people like you so that we can put our heads together to figure out how do we motivate the masses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and you know, we're so close to the experience of a fire. I mean, Hanford had a very serious fire, and they were deeply concerned that they wouldn't get it under control, even with the minimal amount of fire matter that they had around the plant and how close it got. And we just had a fire on the gorge here that they were it was running out of control. We're in conditions that a nuclear plant should never be operating because you can't secure it. And they were way understaffed to control the fire, they really were about to call a general alarm in the Northwest about damage to the plant. Wow. And uh, When was that? Well, that was probably when that big, before the big fire. That, Two at years least that, ago? Yeah, Two before ago. that. No, it was it was about 12 years ago. Wow. Yeah. And it was really a very... It must have been really big. It, so I can't understand. The public has spoken. The public has spoken. They don't want this thing. What in the world prevents, I still can't figure it out, and a Missile Envy, I don't know if people have read Dr. Helen Caldicott's book, but you should read it, and you should also read Winona LaDuke, you know who that is, who ran with Ralph Nader for Green Party, she was going to be a vice president, and she's out of Minnesota, and she has her tribal rights, and she's written excellent information on all the hidden waste they have from nuclear experiments, from nuclear transport, from, and it's just endless. And we just got to start buckling down and saying, no, no, we're way over capacity for our children, for our grandchildren. We don't need it. We have much better future. We're really brilliant here in the Northwest with all the right people to do the right thing. And Governor Barbara Roberts and Christine Irvin, Christine Irvin is now back from Washington, D.C., after helping close the Trojan nuclear plant here in Oregon. And she got a position as the leading energy efficiency person in the United States to lead that department. And she went to D.C., and now she's back here, head of six boards. And she says, oh, well, I already dealt with the other. I don't want to deal with this. So if an official that knows and is experienced and has the full knowledge how easy it is to close it, why? Why don't they close it? It's a huge mystery to me. Well, you wonder why they don't close every single nuclear power plant. I think that's yeah. why they don't, because if they close one, then they all... I mean, this is the problem, though. The Columbia, the generating station, the casts that keep our spent fuel, the Holtec casts, they're the thin three five-eighths inch thick casts that leak after 20 years. The company says in their yeah. information it leaks. We're at year 18 with these casts yeah. up there. So we're hitting a critical time where... We not only have the Hanford issue, but we're hitting a time where it, once these casts start leaking, you can't move the waste. Yeah. Well, and is it the psychology of the Northwest and the political leadership? We have the Trident submarines up in Tacoma, and those are nuclear. So are we vested through the military and all the various secrets of where things are stored and what is in use so that they don't move on it? Is that part of it? That's got to be part of it. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, it's kind of a part of abuse. It's like uh, yeah, the whole statement. It's like, bat you know, Americans are like battered wives, right? Really, yeah. We're really getting battered, seriously beaten. And the batterer is saying, what? I'm not doing anything. And everyone's like, oh, it must be me. 
It must be me that makes my kid get sick. And it's my family's history that we have diabetes, even though no, nobody ever had diabetes. People will have said to me, oh, well, maybe we just didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. And they, you know? they've linked record numbers of autism in children to levels of radiation. Why do we want to? What kind of activities have you done that were effective? Like, what were the actions that you took in your career as an activist that were effective at closing the nuclear facilities? Well, when I watched President Carter and his wife walk through radioactive water at Three Mile Island, I was driving about 80 miles out of the area, and it, I knew that radiation could reach that far as I was driving there, and I then listened to them walking through this plant, and I said, how in the world are they being spokespeople for something that's so damaging? And I made up my mind because they were building, I lived on Long Island, they were building the shore nuclear plant, and the courageous Governor Mario Cuomo finally said, we have no evacuation plan. They put in at least that much. People are able to evacuate from some accident like that. Long Island cannot evacuate with the population that it has. And he put his foot down, and he had the right to, and he told FEMA, Pack up your case and leave, please, because as governor, I can say, no, that plant's never going to operate. So we had Casey, who set up Watergate with Nixon, came in and testified at the county legislature in Suffolk County how wonderful a future, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, knowing the damage that could be done. And and the governor just stood right up against them. You can put me in jail, he said. But I'm yeah, but that's the, the governor. I mean, yeah. so what you're saying is what we should be talking to Governor Kate Brown also, as well as Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have a DOE. Most states don't have a Department of Energy statewide. Should we be calling the Department of Energy also? Well, and they've underfunded it. Yeah, they have succeeded in underfunding it. Our legislators have saved the, the uh, Air Force... I mean, this is the have. thing. This is kind of a lonely fight to close the Columbia Generating mm. Station. Most people are not interested in it at all. They don't comprehend the danger that we're sitting in day after day after day because if we have an earthquake fault, and it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when we have an earthquake up there. If the Columbia Generating Station is still open, we are going to have a serious catastrophe greater than any nuclear meltdown we've ever had because of its closeness to Hanford. Well, and we're already having a serious catastrophe, too, because of the salmon disappearing. I mean, this is a major market here. These, these are part of the native tribe's beautiful tradition about saving a species, and a whole group of people are so sick, and we don't have the money, and everybody's struggling, and it's so simple to just solve that aspect of it. Right. And, and make it a better future. Uh, so the, the small modular reactor project, so many people were so excited at it, Oregon State, and it was the most ridiculous project. They never built it. They never proved that it even worked. And they well, wanted, you know, they they wanted are 250 it. million here. They wanted uh, 500 million in Washington State, and they wanted a billion in Idaho, and they didn't get any of it. You know, they are building it, uh, but I did read an article that they've run into a snag that they have <laughs> That's to right. fix. So now it, it's a not snag. actually functioning. They're trying to, there's a problem that came up that they didn't foresee, so then they requested additional funds to solve that problem, which the NRC gave them. Like they got money for it. Mm -hmm. or, how no, recent was that? Huh? How recent? I think I read this in the last three weeks. Yeah, well, that would be Trump. You know, it's a, it's he a very recent He wants to exterminate thing. us. It's a, we're like in a concentration camp, especially with Trump in office. I mean, it's no help that we have legislators that don't really constantly act against it. But, um, yeah, he really, we're like we're in a concentration camp of radiation, basically. Pretty much. It's kind of like World War Three, And I think, honestly, though, Nancy, I think that that is why a lot of people just check out on yeah. it. Because they're like, well, what are we going to do about it? Well, what we can do about it is acknowledge it and then eat differently, like consume differently. Keep yourself out of, you know, don't really don't go in the Columbia River. Yeah. Do certain things that will. Yeah, you can go in other rivers. There's tributaries that aren't totally contaminated. But why go in one where they're actually dumping nuclear waste in there and also 
it's seeping in from Hanford. It's a double hit. Mm -hmm. Plus Trojan, mm -hmm. they threw, they cut that machine off and threw it in the river down there at the mouth of the river. So it's two degrees hotter up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing about the salmon dying, you know, the state of Washington and the state of Oregon just keep dumping salmon in the river. Mm -hmm. They keep hoping that they're going to thrive. Yeah, I know, and they don't because they're not designed for it, <clears throat> the no. way they breed them. Yeah. I, I mean, this is the thing about fish, interesting thing about fish. They see cesium-137 as magnesium in their bodies or potassium. So they magnetize it a thousand times because there's not much in the ocean water. Mm -hmm. So over the years, their bodies have... John Goffman explained this in his book, Poison Power, mm -hmm. how when the fish, the freshwater fish that go out to the ocean and come back in, when they're exposed to the cesium-137, they magnetize it in their body, excuse me, <clears throat> about a thousand times. Mm -hmm. So that it's actually much more dangerous to eat a contaminated fish than it is to drink a gallon of contaminated water. Mm -hmm. That's what he posits. Mm -hmm. Because you're actually consuming the radioactivity, whereas the water is, it is extremely low level. The concentration is less in the water than in the fish mm -hmm. because of the fish's biology. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So yeah. this is like, and yet, you know, I know my daughter, even my own daughter and my niece, they still eat sushi. They still eat fish. Yeah. They, I mean, I don't know how, you know, what do you think of the Olympics that's going to be happening? That's insane. But I just want to give you a positive result of when activists get involved, we did stop those SMR projects. I mean, with we the did here in Oregon last year. year. Brought in and the room was packed. And, well, and then the committee that we went to in Oregon, that was the first one. And they cut off my mic because I had flyered Hood River, with and the people called in to their legislator from Hood River, and then the chair of it, the two of them walked out, cut my mic off, wouldn't let me testify after about eight people testified really well, and but it was still allowable for me to have my right that I had signed in on the right time, you know, and they cut me off, but the rest of the legislators from all around the state stayed. And they voted against the SMRs. Wow. Yep. So, and we won in Washington and we won in Idaho. And it totally shocked the industry. Yeah, I think the industry is fighting back really hard And the politicians, right now yeah. Because they're not winning this propaganda war. But mm -hmm. you know what, though, why they can't win the propaganda war? Because people's children are still getting sick. Yeah. People are still getting sick. You yeah. can't hide cancer. You can't hide autoimmune diseases. Yeah. I mean, people are connecting the dots. And frankly, it's not just the radioactivity. It's the chemical contamination that also goes along with creating the radioactivity yeah and so yeah. that's another part of the conversation i mean when you look at the columbia generating station in hanford the spills up there around that site of the chemicals that they have up mm. there are off the charts yeah. they don't even report any of that no you know and the people up there though this is the thing they get angry because this is their opportunities as a secretary working up there to make 80 grand a year mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you, what, what other opportunity are you going to make as a person who would normally make forty five, thirty to forty five thousand dollars a year? They don't have to worry. You know why? It's the biggest solar plate in the country. The amount of solar radiation that you can generate is endless in that area. Yes, and they would have jobs. They would have excellent jobs. Excellent. That's salaries. if our Congress would fund solar. Like the the yeah. Trump administration just cut out all funding for solar. But yeah, but the people are so fed up with all the cancers they've got and all the other problems that they have turned around. And the head of a union up there told me he's a big leader up there in the AFL CIO, and he said they are speaking out against these projects, and they want the other. They've educated themselves. And the Chancellor of Germany, do you know about her? Yeah, Merkel. Angela Merkel, yeah. Yeah. She, she closed four right after Fukushima. Right. Four nuclear power plants. And she has the same climate that we do. She has the same capability that we do in economy and changing things. And she did it like that. Well, Just she's like a that. physicist. She's an educated woman. She saw what was going on in Fukushima. And she's like, uh-uh. We are not going to tell our people we didn't know it once again. That's why I think Germany took over on it. Because Germany in World War II 
when it all ended, the people, the politicians all had to say, oh, we didn't know about the extermination camps. So I, there's a heavy heart in Germany about that still. Right, but we're educated here because 13 yes. people, I mean, I mean 13, 13 years ago, people in the referendum said no more. Yes, but that's not enough. That's not, this is the thing. If, even myself, eight years ago, I didn't even know what the Columbia Generating Station was. Before Fukushima, I was like kind of knew about it. I had just been told when I moved up to the yeah. north. Before I moved to the northwest, I had no idea what Hanford was. I had no, I actually believed that the San Onofre nuclear power facility was an observatory. Mm. That's what it looked like. I had driven past it hundreds of times, and I grew up in L.A. Yeah. So I was very familiar with it. I had no idea there was a nuclear power facility there. Mm -hmm. And then when I did not hear about it, I didn't realize it was not well kept. Yeah. And it wasn't. This is the dirty secret. It's not just the Columbia Generating Station. It is every nuclear facility on the planet is not run with efficiency and real honesty. It cannot be. It's not designed to be. Well, this is the one thing yeah. I discovered, Nancy, is... I found a scientific journal report in 2012. Somebody tested the validity of the IAEA's safety culture model because they have a model that is used at every single nuclear facility around the world. It has eight markers of safety. Mm -hmm. It was written in 1957. It had never been empirically tested. They never tested it. They wrote it, handed it out to everybody, and no one ever tested if it would work. So this group of scientists in Spain found a participating nuclear power facility in Spain to try to run it. They ran two separate, two different types of people running the safety test model, doing it. They had a group of six scientists, and they worked independently of each other. To And then they compared their studies. What they discovered is... In every, every single one of the eight markers on both sides of the fence, both times that they tried to do it, they failed miserably except for one marker. And that one marker was that the workers felt like they could talk to their supervisors about problems on the plant. Mm -hmm. And that only passed by 50%. So we have a safety culture model that's being used internationally that is 100% ineffective. Yeah, yeah. So Well, but they haven't convinced the public, and, and things are getting done in other places. They, they, they went bankrupt. The Westinghouse Division, uh, uh, nuclear division, went bankrupt. And guess who bailed them out before he left office? See if you can guess which president. Dun, da, da, da. Ready? Obama. There you go. He had to, because that's who put him in office. There you go. <laughs> so the intertwining of this insidious relationship between the nuclear the military yes. and these nuclear power plants that are a phallic symbol when they build them i mean come on get over it we've got so many things and so much future to offer and we should right now by starting to close that plant just shut it down listen to the people follow the law don't be illegal i could put you all in jail if i had a good lawyer and some decent courts and i will do it and the most positive thing is to please do it right. I'm not going to beg you. I'm going to tell you. You have no no reason, no recourse whatsoever not to do it immediately because the people demanded it in the market test. I don't know if I referred to that already, but it doesn't, it doesn't compete. And it's supposed to be closed. 13 years ago, the people said, we've had enough. That's it. It's over with. Well, and here, and this is why people don't pay attention to this issue, yeah. in, in, frankly. Yeah. yeah. Because... We have a plant that's been mandated to be closed under every reasonable thing, and yet every one of our elected officials basically looks the other way and allows it to continue and says, there's nothing we can do about it. So if there are elected officials will say that, then, so then, okay, let's take this another step because we can compare this with what happened in San Onofre. In San Onofre, uh, they were about to install a replacement part that wasn't the right part, and a whistleblower blew the whistle and called Barbara Boxer's office, and she held hearings. This is how it got closed. Mm -hmm. That took about a year, all the hearings, and they yeah. ended up mandating it to be closed. Here we are three years later, and guess what they've decided? 
they now take all that nuclear waste that they have been storing there and instead of moving it off site, they have now voted to move it 100 feet closer to the ocean and store it next to the ocean. So it's almost as if if you attempt to assert your rights, they punch you in the face again. This is why I say we're like battered women. Because we are being held captives, and we have got to figure out a way to stop allowing the abusers to beat us up. Yeah, you know we have to. We have it. figured out a way, but the, you know the the conditions around us are pretty outrageous, and I can understand why people shut down. Right. They, well, well there's no shattered about. country sh- yeah. shelter. They, they, to they go think to they're going to die anyways anyway from global warming, so why bother? Right. That's part of it. I think there's a real fatalism within our. Especially now with the fires. I mean, today yeah. is what date? It's 825, right, when we're recording this. And th- we were talking about this last night. There are fires going on in Africa, 167,000 fires that they normally do to burn their vegetation. Then we have fires in South America. Siberia has 100 million, 100 million acres on fire in Siberia on top of what's on fire in the Amazon. Mm-hmm. So it is almost as if it's intentional to burn us down. Mm-hmm. But what are they going to do when they take away our ability to create oxygen? Like, what happens with that? Yeah. You well, know? It's not a pretty picture, that's for sure. No. No. So the point is, of us doing these podcasts and these interviews is for us to, not to bring death and gloom to people, but to figure out, like, it's up to us to find our voice, to stand up before it as really is too late. As long as we're breathing. Yeah. I keep doing it. You know, I've been threatened. I've been actually almost strangled in a meeting by an individual. And I don't care. You can kill me. You're going to kill me anyway. But I feel it's our duty to at least try. And that's what we're about. Human beings try. Well, we have to make the effort. Try is one of my key pet peeve words. You don't want me to go off on that. Because when you say the word try gives you permission to fail so it's one of the words i've eliminated from my vocabulary i don't try Uh, i'm really i'm really didactic about words so what do you use you do your best effort you do the best challenge that's trying no it's not trying trying allows you to fail when Hmm. this is why we have failed you guys kept trying we don't need to try we need to be effective we need to like figure out a way to change the language because when you change our thoughts are things that's what i think like we, if we can create it, if we can see it and actually visualize it, and we use our words conform with those things, it actually manifests itself. Like, we must change the minds of the people in power. And the people that work there, it's not just the people in power, it's the unions, it's the people that are like, oh, I, you're threatening my job. No, they, thre- they change their mind. Most they have of those people oh, up there? Oh, yeah. Well, why don't they stop working then? I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, this is the complicated, and it was built to be complicated. Mm -hmm. It was intentional like this to make it so complicated that the reasonable idea of, oh, my God, we're poisoning our children seems like an impossible task. What they are doing is switching to other jobs and training themselves for other jobs so that they may not even have staff to run these things. And And just run it all on computers? You think they're just going to run it all on computers? No, they can't do that. They, it's impossible to do, but yeah, I think that that would send such a strong message that might do it. But in any case, it's still our responsibility to hound the legislature to, to keep on it. It's incomprehensible that they just keep them open. Like you and I, we're in the same spot. Incomprehensible. It's like, yeah. uh, how is it that we call repeatedly our elected officials and they keep giving us lip service? Mm, I know, yeah. I mean, you've been doing this how long? 40 years. How long have you been attempting to close the Columbia Generating Station? It's probably about 15 years. You know what? Who was it? Diane Turco. She worked on closing Pilgrim. Very. She created the Downwinders, right? The, I think it's called Cape Downwinders. She told me it took them 32 years to close the Columbia Generating. I mean, to close the Pilgrim Nuclear Power sure. Facility. Yeah. And she said that their court case won because a judge deemed it to be unsafe. And their nuclear power facility is identical to ours. Yeah. 
So her suggestion is that we get those documents and find an attorney who will actually start the litigation. I'm trying. <laughs> That's the hard part. There's mm -hmm. really nobody that... What about Hanford Challenge? What about those folks? I'm not sure. They only ham handle workers, right? Mm -hmm. They don't... They're not... Well, I'm not sure. It may have changed. Well, we'll have, we should look into that. Yeah. I mean, there are people that I've done the Trojan thing with, but they've moved on to other things. Right. Well, this is the thing. Even like with the... This is what I was telling you last night. Um... The Pilgrim Nuclear Power Facility is being closed down. So now the NRC, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, has granted Holtec, who makes the CAS. They've never decommissioned a nuclear power facility. The NRC is giving them something like $500 million, $500 plus million, to decommission Pilgrim, and they have no experience. Yeah. So it's kind of all of a need. Even if we get it closed down, then we have that second, like, the people at San Onofre, like, okay, they were super happy it closed down. But now they're like, oh, great, what do we do with these wastes? Because the government still doesn't want to do anything with the waste. They want to just leave everything there. Yeah, well, I don't know what the answer is. I really don't at this stage. I thought you would. Well, <laughs> I, there are answers, but it doesn't get resolved. It's, it's been like, it makes perfect sense. The public have spoken. Una you know, almost unanimously, I mean, what does it take? Because it has to happen. And I, I keep working on it, keep coming up with ideas, and I'm not going to stop because that's the way I'm built. But, yeah, we're going to somehow, hopefully in a year, it's going to be over with, with this one. Hopefully, yeah. before we have an earthquake. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's the other thing. Or a thing. fire. A fire is a big deal right now. Right. Yeah. Right. That could be real. What do you think of this idea that I came up with that I really don't like to call it nuclear waste because it's not really waste. It's really a byproduct because a waste is something you kind of throw away and you can decompose and it becomes compost and it's recyclable. But this is not waste. This turns into something else that we don't know what to do and it's highly deadly. Yeah, but people's minds, if you start saying byproduct, then it relates to so many things. But this is nu this is nuclear creates things we don't need. We absolutely do not. And in such huge volume, they can grasp that. They can understand that, uh -huh. how, how insane a policy it is, especially when we don't need it. And I prefer the waste because, you know, it's like, where do we send our own personal human waste? You know, and they know there are problems and it has to be treated and it takes a, a while. It's kind of like yeah. our issue that we have yeah. going on in the in America about our recyclables. Now we don't, more than 50% of what we used to think was recyclable. Actually, unbeknownst to us, was being shipped off to China and dumped over there. And yeah. they finally said, hey, we're not taking your trash anymore because <laughs> it's not really recyclable. See? So now how long, I've been in Oregon 15 years and when, I remember when I first came here, they told me, you have to recycle. And I'm like... Isn't that your job to separate the waste? I was, like, insulted, you know? So, okay, I've been got in this program, and then this last year, like, oops, sorry, folks, you can only... The amount of stuff that you can recycle is very small. Mm. And it's because of the plastics and the chemicals oh, yeah. and all the, the yeah. way they manu... They could have done it cleaner. Like, you'd think that when China shut that door down that we would stop seeing those containers in the store, but mm -hmm. we don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. I remember my friend in New York, and she, she was really, she was really good at. Uh, she was one of the fighters on closing the nuclear plant and the ha not letting it operate the Sherman thing, and uh, but she said, "Oh, I don't want to recycle. That seems so impractical to me." <laughs> it was so funny. You know, she didn't make any connection. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is probably probably she's probably right because three fourths of what you recycle, it turned out, was trash that you really couldn't recycle, <laughs> oh, yeah. and China was just taking it in. Going, yeah. I mean, probably China was probably just dumping it off on India, you know, selling it to India. Sure. Like, who knows what happened with it? Yeah, we really don't know. I mean, yeah. You know, this is the thing, Nancy. This becomes a lifelong dedication closing these nuclear mm -hmm. facilities. Yeah. Just to close them down. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind getting kicked out, and I don't. Because it seems to catalyze some action, and it did. And, and canceling that kind of money going into that kind of project for the small modular reactors, which is a tremendous accomplishment. And the people in Idaho, especially in the artist community, were so grateful they didn't even know what was happening. And we are the people that 
at least open it up to discussion, and we do get some things done. So we, we just have to keep at it, and I believe it's going to get results, more results than we hope for. Didn't they just renew its license for 40 years? Which? CGS. Yeah, but it's, it's conditioned on several things. Now, if those were enforced, it'd be closed. Boop. And the market test is one of them. Boop. You're market done. test means it turns a profit. No, it's a nonprofit. It's a public utility. And it doesn't have to earn a profit. And it pre pre creates all this stuff that takes taxpayers' money out of pocket. I mean... What does it, that mean, then, when you said the market, it has to... Pr what was that phrase you said? I market I, something? I, uh, well, the market has proven there's a market test market that the test. public passed in a, in a law in the state of Oregon realizing how much expense is involved in waste and proved that this plant is not more, ex is not more expensive than uh, all the other alternatives that we have now and all the wonderful jobs and all the brilliant thinking. We've got it all. And boom, they don't do anything about it. So where is the mystery here? We've got it all on paper. It's all written out. It's all proven. And that we had Fukushima. People were in total shock worldwide, the extent to which that yeah. would happen. And we're facing earthquakes. Why are we not doing this? Who yeah. are the people that could enforce these laws that you say we mandated? Every single elected official, the city council. Governor Brown. We passed, we passed a resolution in city council to close it. In Portland. And it, and it never went anywhere. Why didn't it go anywhere? It never got enforced. So they passed it. Yeah. I mean, they could arrest the people that keep it going. They could easily go to Bonneville, which is headquartered here in Portland, and say, you're under arrest. You're performing an illegal act on our soil that we can enforce the law. So is, doesn't Bonneville Power Administration actually take in electricity or uh, energy sources from a number of other utility types, not just nuclear. Oh, yeah. They take it in from coal and hydro, and I mean, I saw this thing. So it's, so they could, in fact, just say we're not using the nuclear power. They're the ones who could say no to it, right? Well, they're, they're supposed by law required to. Absolutely. Yep. You mean the board of directors? At no, the administrator. Well, the board of, there is no board of directors, but the administrator is responsible by law to close it. And he's out of Enron. So start thinking about that. I mean, Enron's mentality, I mean, we, we uh, brought these crooks in. I fought that, and they never listened to me. But, yeah. So this is part of how me and Louisa, we go in circles on the last nuke trying to figure this thing about Bonneville Power. Because when you go to Bonneville Power Administration, it gives you the board of directors and the board and then the administration. Like, there's a set of board of directors from all the utility companies, right, that are responsible. Right. And yeah, and they went into Bonneville's meeting recently. This is about a year ago over here at their buildings. Right. And one of the guys from one of the smaller uh, public utilities, but mm -hmm. pretty good, you know, they have pretty good uses. She said, why are you making us suffer in our communities? We have no economy with this plant operating. And Really? Yeah. Oh, he raised cane like crazy. It was never publicized. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. I did not know that. Oh, yeah. They raised, oh, boy, did they. So ever. what did they say? What was the response? Oh, well, you know, there are problems. It was all just uh, 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 no answers. And they got away with it. Now, why aren't our legislators squawking about that? These are people that, you know, they have their public. We're unique in that way in the United States. And we're supposed to have. FDR set it up so farmers could have a decent economy and, and service with electricity. And look what it's become. And we have a total known international crook running it. The world's largest grid. Now I know, found out it goes to Mexico, it goes to Canada, and it goes over to Denver as well. Our grid. Our grid. Goes into Mexico? Yeah. And it goes into Canada? Yeah, and it goes over to Denver. I just found out about Denver. Our grid reaches out to Denver? All that's... All that area. It's the world's largest oh, transmission grid. Yeah. So in theory, if they really wanted to create an issue, they could blow up that grid and the whole West Coast would be toast. <laughs> well, aren't they blowing it up? When you wow. think about it. The customers they serve are all sick. 
You know, I mean, come on. Woo-hoo. Who's at home? <laughs> you Who's got on your, first? You've got your space stations? Is that it? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that is really what they're doing, is they can't oh, wait yeah. to get to their little oh, that's space for real. stations. I know a person... So we have about 10 minutes left here, Nancy. Mm -hmm. Uh, You've been listening to Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission radio show with Nancy Newell, who is a Northwest activist, very instrumental in closing down Trojan, helping stop, close the small nuclear reactors. And the shore. And the shore. And Long Island. Island, Right. And we're trying really, really, we're making, not trying, we are doing it. We're changing our language. I'm going to catch myself on that one about closing the Columbia Generating Station. So I have this question to you. What can we do in the next three months that you think might make an impact in change? Like, how often do we call people? What can we do on a daily basis? Like, what is it going to take? I think we should send in, and uh, as a guest, the Chancellor, I think that's her title, of Germany, West Germany. Oh, yeah. And I think we should demand that several people come that will be part of the panel, but that she be the lead on how simple it is and how how great the economy was. Well, and you just get in touch with her, and we'll make those arrangements. I am. I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to. Are you really? Oh, yeah, you bet. Are you able to get in touch She's with her? She's a very reachable person as far as Angela Merkel's office? Yeah, I think she would find it appealing, actually, because she doesn't want any of this stuff. It would affect Germany as well. Hey, if you can get her to say that, we'll set up the place. We'll get it done. We can make it work. All right, let's get it done. It takes a woman. It's been the women here that Pretty mostly... Much. That I have even, you know, I mean. That's another whole show. Why is it mostly women? That's, yeah. that's kind of like an interesting thing. Why is it mostly women? We give life. We bring life on earth. You think we're going to You think it's just like our it? natural inclination. Well, no, it's, it, it is that the quality of life is respected. And why shorten it? We mm. are very unusual creatures. Look at the, our history and what we've done. We could do so much better at this stage. Boy, yeah. could we do yeah. so much better. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't take, and that's the thing, it wouldn't take that much effort to no. do so much better. <laughs> no. Like, we're doing really good. All we'd have to do is a few short things. Yeah. But what it really does require is we get off of the uh, war machine hose. You know, we got we to gotta stop drinking from the bottle of the war machine. Well, that's true. That's the biggest goal, but it's easy to get off this thing. Because it doesn't even feed the war machine. You don't think it does? There's so much waste around the country. You don't think that that waste from Columbia generated? Them? No, at all. No, Mm-mm. no. Well, you think it's more that they're just keeping it going because they don't want to say, "Oh, we had to close it." Ego. I don't know. I can't answer it's that. It's so incomprehensible. Here we are at the end of the hour with the same questions we had in the last. Yeah, why hour. try to analyze them? They're sick. They're, they're mentally ill. I mean, maybe that's where we need to go. Treat them like they, they are really mentally are. mentally ill. They are mentally So how do you change and they're, mentally ill and people? They're when they're, they're But they're people criminals. in power, Nancy. That we elect. Some of them. So that means that we have to make sure we elect the right people. Right. And, or, else, or just held them accountable in as many ways as possible. What about going after the lobbyists? I think I read something like there's 13 lobbyists for every single they elected They make person. fools of themselves. We made them. That's why we stopped the SMR money. They are so lacking in skill on communicating the rationale of what they promote. That's why we succeeded. You, we would be under so much debt right now with these ridiculous projects and, you know, the... Some of the legislators pounding their chest. Oh, it's coming out of Oregon State. We're brilliant. Blah 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 blah. Boof. <laughs> so you know, you we really socked it to them. So right now they're like, oh no, we can't lose Columbia. Oh no, no, no. This is no. This is, you know that kind of stuff. And you know, it's like us in a boxing ring. And okay, well, there will be a next round. You just watch. <laughs> you know that kind wow. of thing. Yeah. Well, here we are, relentlessly. We are going to keep going on this. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to say to our listeners before we end? I I say that as long as we're on the earth, we are responsible. We are responsible. And we have to, in whatever, if you write a little note, if you call, if you just talk to your neighbors, whatever it is, that whole stream of consciousness has effect. Don't ever let anybody tell you differently. I was afraid of public speaking, and I was age 40, 
when I did my first public speech and the head of the legislature in Suffolk County said, don't worry, Nancy, we got you. We want to listen to you after Three Mile Island. So make the effort and be proud of yourself. This is very much part of being human and making life worth it. Well, those are good words to end with. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Lonnie Clark with my guest, Nancy Newell, Northwest Anti-Nuclear Accident, or actually more like a pro-nuclear, pro-nuclear, a uh, pro nuke, a nuke truther, I guess that's what we call it, is a nuke truther, you know, anti nuke activist, but really a nuke truther, which makes you an anti nuker. That's the thing. Yeah, so it's anti, 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 so it's positive. You know that whole theory in <laughs> physics? Yeah. So, hi, folks. I'm the anti, anti, anti. Anti, anti, <laughs> well, four times anti because we're still against it. <laughs> talk to you guys later. Put your courage feet on. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs> Bye, Nancy. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for joining the Age of Vision radio show. Please like, subscribe, and share on Spreaker.com or on the YouTube channel Nuts for Art, N-U-T-Z-F-O-R-A-R-T. Send all comments and ideas to Lonnie Clark at ageofvision at gmail.com. We urge all, especially scientists and politicians, to follow the words of our beloved American icon, Mark Twain. Always do right. This will gratify some and astonish the rest. <laughs>